Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In my previous video, I have discussed the generation as well as mathematical aspects of minimum shift keying technique. In this video, I am going to discuss the transmitter and receiver of the same. Let us start with the MSK transmitter. At the input, we have two input sinusoidal waves, one of frequency FC and another of frequency 1 by 4 TB. This is given here. The first signal is centered at frequency FC, which is given by NC into T divided by 4 TB, where NC is any integer. The second signal, as you can see, is given by cos pi T divided by 2 TB. This is centered at frequency F2. I have elaborated that signal here. You should note cos 2 pi F2 T is equal to the given signal cos pi t by 2 tb. If I expand this as 2 pi f2 t, I will have to write 2 pi multiplied by, since I have multiplied the numerator by 2, I have to multiply the denominator also by 2. So therefore, it will become 1 by 4 tb multiplied by t. If I compare 2 pi f2 t with this part, I will find f2 is equals to 1 by 4 tb. That is why the first signal is centered at fc, and the second signal is centered at 1 by 4 TB. These waves are first applied to a product modulator. This produces two phase coherent sine waves at frequency F1 and F2 respectively. These two sinusoidal waves are then separated from each other by the use of two narrow band filters. The bandpass filter in the upper branch is centered at around F1 and the bandpass filter at the lower branch is centered at frequency F2. The resulting filter outputs are then added to produce a pair of quadrature carriers which are also called as orthonormal basis functions. Let us denote them as phi1 of t and phi2 of t respectively. I have discussed the forms of these orthonormal basis functions in my previous video. However, I have given the same equations for your reference here as well. So, phi 1 of t equals to square root of 2 by tb cos phi by 2 tb into t multiplied by cos 2 pi fc t. This is over the interval minus tb to plus tb. Please note the duration is 2 bit intervals here. And the second basis function which is phi 2 of t equals square root of 2 by tb sin pi by 2 tb into t multiplied by sin 2 pi fc t. This is over the interval 0 to 2 tb. Finally, the orthonormal basis functions phi1 of t and phi2 of t are multiplied with two binary waves m1 of t and m2 of t, both of which will have a bit rate equal to 1 by 2 tb. This is the condition for minimum shift keying technique. You should note these two binary waves are extracted from the incoming binary sequence which is b of t and I will explain how these are generated in my next slide. Lastly, the multiplier outputs are simply then added to create the MSK wave. So, the MSK wave is given by S of t equals square root of 2eb by tb cos theta of t multiplied by cos 2 pi fc t minus of square root of 2eb by tb sin theta of t multiplied by sin 2 pi fc t where theta of t is equal to theta of 0 that is the phase of the transmitted signal at time t is equals to 0 plus or minus pi divided by 2 tb into t over the interval 0 to tb. In this diagram, I am going to discuss the generation of the final MSK signal. We start with the binary input sequence which is 11010000. In my previous video when I was discussing the mathematical aspects of MSK, I have discussed the phase trellis as well as the phase tree diagrams. As per that discussion, Every time there is a symbol 1, the phase of the transmitted signal increases by pi by 2 and whenever there is a symbol 0 at the input, the phase of the transmitted signal decreases by a value of pi by 2. You should note that these phase additions are a modulo 2 pi operation. So, starting with the very first bit, we have 1. So, from 0 TB to 1 TB, we have a pi by 2 phase increment. And from 1 TB to 2 TB, we again have a symbol 1. Therefore, the phase will again increase by pi by 2 radians. Therefore, from 0 to 2 TB, the total increment in the phase is pi. That is why at 0 TB, the phase is denoted as 0. And at 2 TB, it is pi by 2 plus pi by 2. So, the phase is denoted as pi. Moving on, 
from 2 TB to 3 TB we have a symbol 0. So the phase has now decreased by pi by 2 radians and we once again have a symbol 1 here. So pi by 2 plus pi by 2 is pi. This is what is given here. You should note in this particular sequence we have taken the time interval which are even integrals of TB that is 0 TB, 2 TB, 4 TB and lastly 6 TB. You can also note at this stage the phase is pi. So when there is a symbol 0 it decreases by pi by 2. So at 5 TB it is pi minus of pi by 2 which is pi by 2 and during this interval we have a 0 again. So it will be pi by 2 minus of pi by 2 therefore it is 0. So this is how you will generate the phase of the transmitted signal by considering the even integrals of the bit duration TB. Then we have the second sequence which considers the odd numbered integral of TB. So at 1 TB, this is 0, this is 1 TB, we have a symbol 1 here. So the phase has incremented by pi by 2 which is written here. Then at pi by 2, then we have another 1 which is pi which we have shown here. Then we have symbol 0, so it is pi minus of pi by 2 which is once again pi by 2. Here it is pi by 2, the next symbol is 1. So at this instant it will be pi. In a similar fashion, you can calculate the phase for the rest of the operations. So at odd numbered integrals of TB, especially at 1 TB, the phase is pi by 2. At 3 TB, it is again pi by 2. At 5 TB, it is again pi by 2. And lastly, at 7 TB, it is minus pi by 2. Now, as per the diagram in the transmitter here, the two signals are then simply added to create the MSK wave. So, when I come back to the diagram, this is S1 into phi 1 of t, which is the waveform shown here. This is S2 into phi 2 of t, which is the waveform shown here. And lastly, we add these two waveforms to create the MSK transmitted signal. Let us now move on towards the MSK receiver. The received noisy MSK signal X of t is correlated with two locally generated replicas of the coherent reference signals phi 1 of t and phi 2 of t respectively. Note that in both cases the integration intervals is 2 tb seconds because when I come back to the equations for the basis functions you will note the basis functions have a duration of 2 bit intervals. Further, when I come back to the diagram and notice the integration carefully, I will note that the quadrature channel is delayed by 1 TB seconds with respect to that in the in-phase channel. We know that a multiplier followed by an integrator is nothing but a correlator. So I can identify that I have a correlator in the upper branch as well as in the lower branch. We have already learned that a correlator creates a coefficient and let the coefficient in the correlator in the upper branch be denoted by x1 and the same in the lower branch be denoted by x2. These resulting in-phase and quadrature channel correlator outputs are next compared with a threshold of 0 volts and this creates the estimates of theta of 0 which is denoted by theta cap of 0 and theta of tb which is denoted by theta cap of tb in the in-phase channel and quadrature phase channel respectively. Finally, these phase decisions are then interleaved so as to reconstruct the original binary wave with a minimum average probability of symbol error. Now, how is this reconstructed? This is done by using a simple decision rule. The decision rule is already discussed in my previous video. Anyhow, I'm going to discuss the same here because it is relevant here. We say that if the estimates theta cap of 0 equals to 0, and theta cap of tb equals to minus pi by 2 or alternatively theta cap of 0 is equals to pi and theta cap of tb is equals to pi by 2 then the receiver will make a final decision in favor of symbol 0. This is very clearly understood by just noting what is the phase change between theta cap of 0 and theta cap of tb. If it is decreasing then that means the decision is to be made in favor of symbol 0. Here it is 0 to minus pi by 2, there is a decrease and here it is pi to pi by 2, once again it is a decrease. Therefore, decision made in favor of symbol 0 would be correct. On the other hand, if the estimates theta cap of 0 is equals to pi and theta cap of tb equals to minus pi by 2 or alternatively theta cap of 0 equals to 0 and theta cap of tb equals to pi by 2, then the receiver will make a final decision in favor of symbol 1. 
So here we have a phase increment between theta cap of 0 and theta cap of Tb. You should note pi minus of minus pi by 2 is still an increment in the phase and 0 to pi by 2 is also an increment in the phase. Therefore, the decision made in favor of symbol 1 would once again be correct. Right. That is about the discussion on the transmitter and receiver of minimum shift keying technique. If you like this video, kindly press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.